Okay, so um, first of all, I just want to thank the organizers for having me. Um, most of my friends call me Charlie or Chuck. I'm, uh, my full name is actually very long. Uh, no need for that though. Uh, today I'm talking about the four M's. And uh, I'm very excited about to talk about these four M's because I'm very passionate about them. Uh, the four M's are meditation, morning rituals, and medical marijuana. Does anybody have any experience with these things? Or if you want to ask any questions while I'm speaking, go ahead and feel free in the chat. I'll wait. Okay. Well, to start off with, um, meditation has been a big part of my life for a very long time. Uh, my grandmother is actually a, what they call a curandera from Mexico. That's a spiritual woman or spiritual lady who, who helps people with healing. Um, so what she does is <clears throat> she basically goes around to, to people who are very ill uh, in some cases, terminally ill, and she helps to heal them, or in some cases, if they pass on, she helps them to go in peace um, and also helps the family deal with the death. So that's kind of part of my background. So I grew up with that. And so from that, um, I, I got a lot of deep spiritual insights for my life which uh, I'm very grateful for. Anyhow, before we start this, uh, we can just do a small uh, meditation together. If you, if you like, I would invite you to, to join me now. So what we'll do is we'll just take a few breaths. And in doing so, Relax all the parts of your body, making sure your spine and neck are straight. And as you take your inhales and exhales, you can go right into your heart center. You can feel your heart to slow, start to slow down. And then it's not that you need to turn your mind off or your thoughts off, because I know there's some very intelligent people with creative minds that are always thinking. But it's just that you don't build on those thoughts. It's not a brainstorming session. It's a way to slow things down for the moment. So as we continue to inhale and exhale, we just feel the body start to relax. The shoulders and neck, start to lose any tension. And I invite you to remember a time where you felt very calm, happy, grateful. And put yourself back into that moment. Wherever it is, 
Feel those feelings of peacefulness and content. All the while inhaling and exhaling. And with each exhale, relaxing muscles in the body, slowing down your heart, slowing down your mind. And as we start to come back, you can put your hands to the center of your heart. And what we call in Thailand, a Y. This is a gesture of respect. And we can keep this, cultivate this peace for the rest of the day. Okay, welcome back. So during that meditation, were you able to calm yourself at all? Were you able to feel some sense of peace? I don't know how many of you out there are actually practicing and doing meditation regularly. But I know it's something that's becoming more and more popular and people are getting a lot of gains from it. When they asked the Buddha, what did he gain from meditation? He didn't talk about his gains. He talked about what he lost. And what he lost was those impulses that we have, those knee-jerk reactions that we have that sometimes lead us to annoyance or frustration or even anger. And also to do things that we're not really wanting to do, but in the heat of the moment, we can just lash out. And what meditation does is it just gives us a little buffer, a little practice to not do that. But for my personal, my personal life, what I have seen over maybe more than 20 years now meditating, I have seen that I've been able to get more insights. I've been able to find more awareness and be more conscious. So what does that mean? And how is that even helpful? Well, sometimes I'll have an issue or I'll have a problem in my business life or in my social life. And I can just go sit on the mat, get into meditation, calm myself down, and then slowly bring that situation into my mind. And it's like I can see everything in slow motion can see it piece by piece. And then that way, I can know the direction that I really want to go in. And I think that's been one of the most helpful tools. Like I say, whether that's been in business, or social or personal, I've been able to find some, some pretty nice insights using meditation. And beyond that, even in this time right now with what's going on around the world, uh, 
it's pretty nice to have a technique to go to and, and to be able to calm yourself, be able to find peace when you're feeling some anxiety, when you're sometimes you're feeling some fear. It's a nice tool to be able to, to go to. And believe it or not, sometimes I'm doing meditation um, very early in the morning, like 3 a.m. sometimes. It's, you know, sometimes you, you're tossing and turning and you have something on your mind. Well, I don't do that. I just get out of bed, go onto the mat, and I do meditation. And depending on the situation or how big the problem is, I may be able to go back to bed peacefully in the next 20 minutes. If it's something that's a little weighing a little more heavy on my heart, it may take an hour. But what happens is it's like I've sifted through it. I've worked through it. Now I have peace and now I can sleep easy. So I want to just encourage anybody who, who's either interested in meditation or on the verge of trying some kind of meditation to, to take the step. Little by little, step by step, maybe just five minutes a day. Just close your eyes and get anchor to your breath. And that anchoring to your breath, you'll just find it's going to work wonders for you. Okay, so that's the first M, meditation. By the way, the M's are meditation, morning rituals, and medical marijuana, all of which I'm involved in. The morning rituals... The reason we do morning rituals is so that we can be proactive and not reactive. It kind of ties again back to meditation, but we find that there's so many, many successful people that are um, doing morning rituals. And probably a lot of you are too. It's a way to wake up in the morning, to prime your day, whether you're doing um, a very stressful job or a job that's not so stressful, you, what you're doing is you're just preparing yourself for that day. And there's many people who, who have morning rituals. Richard Branson, Mick Jagger, Robin Sharma, Salvador Dali, all of these people um, have morning rituals. Richard Branson's, I like his, his is uh, that he swims around his island each morning. That's pretty nice, right? But I know a lot of people do workouts in the morning. That's the first thing they do is they do workouts. Um, they do something that kind of gets their body going before they get onto the job. Um, for me and for what I like, and if there's anybody out there that has any morning rituals or has anything, go ahead and, and feel free to type in what, what it is that you do right now and what it is that works for you. Um, I think it's uh, important to do something for the body. Obviously, you're, you've been sleeping all night. The body's been in one or two positions or maybe a few positions, but just in a static position and now it's time for it to get up and you want to get the blood flowing and you want to get the circulation so whatever it is that you do it's something to move the body and it different uh movements are going to work for different people depending on your fitness depending on your age depending on uh what you do uh for exercise for me, I'm playing quite a lot of sport. So in the first thing I get up in the morning, I don't want to go run around because I'm doing sport in the afternoon. But I do want to stretch out the back, especially the back, because it gets tightened. I'll get some uh, 
some some muscle cramp sometimes. So getting on the mat and stretching out and doing some different yoga positions, asanas they call them, uh, that's really important for me. And then on top of that, there's some breathing exercises. Uh, breathing, breathing exercises they call pranayama. There's different types of breathing exercises. Sometimes it's just to balance out uh, your, 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 your nostrils and also your brain. They have uh, breathing techniques where you cover one side, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And as part of this, sometimes they do also breathing retention to give an added um, intensity for this breathing technique. Um, and this breathing technique helps to balance out your mind and give you a little focus, a little more focus for the day. There's other breathing techniques like the fire breath where they, you're just breathing out of your nose moving your stomach in and out with the pressure. And this kind of grazes your energy. And then others, like in the meditation that we just did, where you're doing a little more deep breathing, inhaling, and then exhaling so that you can relax your body. But this is also part of my morning rituals. So I'm doing something for the body and then I'm doing uh, uh, pranayama or breathing exercises that help with my brain and also my lungs. Um, I'm listening, while I'm doing this, I'm listening to some very positive, uh, uplifting music to get my emotions in an elevated state. That's also very important. Mm, and then I will also sit and do a small meditation of gratitude just to start the day. And I do all of that stuff after I've showered and I've kind of rinsed off and, and soaped off. And, and then I feel like I'm ready for the day. Then I'll go and I'll have breakfast. And then it's not until all of those things are done that I'll start responding to people's emails or messages or whatever happens to the day. You know, it used to be in the past that you know, I was running a, a business and, and I would get the first call of the day out of bed. Somebody would, hey, Charlie, we got this emergency. Something's going on straight away. And I would uh, be groggy, barely waking up and trying to already fix a problem or, or turn out a fire somewhere. And when you wake up in that state, it's a whole different day. So I just want to encourage that you try the morning rituals. And if you have any questions um, or you have some things that you're doing, uh, I'm happy to listen. I'm always happy to learn and learn about new techniques, what's working for you. I'm interested in that. That's part of my passion. So if you have something to share, uh, uh, I'm, I'm very interested. Okay, so now the last section is medical marijuana. So the reason why I'm speaking about medical marijuana as part of this is that um, I'm living here in Asia. Uh, I live in Copangan. And medical marijuana just got um, legalized uh, this last year, 2019, February 2019. So it's coming to Asia. And of course, it's going to have a big effect, especially for those people who have the ailments that marijuana can help. And primarily, that is um, epilepsy. Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, anybody that has any kind of seizures and stages of cancer. So 
especially uh, to help with uh, uh, the eating and the nausea that happens. And I'm very excited about uh, medical marijuana coming because I think these kind of plant-based um, uh, medicines are going to be much better for the system, for the body, for humanity, as opposed to what we've been using in the last 20 years, which has been uh, pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals have so many side effects um, that we don't even know about. Um, and we're using them in such a big way. And I think they're having a detrimental effect on uh, the people that, that have to use them and, and are using them on a regular basis. So if they could substitute them and use a plant-based medical marijuana for those ailments like seizures, like epilepsy, Parkinson's and whatnot, I'm all for it. So I'm very, very excited about, um, about that coming to, um, to Asia. I do want to preface it with this um, idea that I also know that it, coming from California and, and how recreational marijuana has um, really impacted California, I want to say that um, I believe that uh, in a lot of cases, it's kind of you found something good and now you want to use more of it. And it's bong hit after bong hit after bong hit. And I don't always agree with that. I think less is more in this case. Um, use it for what you need it for, even if that's stress, even if that's for creativity or what you, whatever it is that you, you use it for. But I think that when people overdo it, it almost gets to the borderline of abuse. Now, granted, it's not something that you can overdose from, but I still think that it can still be abused. So even as much as I am a proponent for medical marijuana and marijuana in general, for helping people to open their minds, I think there's a definite um, possibility that a lot of people will, will abuse it in some ways. So I just want to have a, a word of caution if you've never used it, um, to use it in, uh, in a smart way. Um, so that's pretty much my, my talk for today. Um, I want to thank everybody for, uh, for listening or uh, for inviting me to, to be a part of this. I can go much more into detail in all three of these subjects, but I just wanted to give a little tidbit to just see if anybody was interested. And if you are, you can uh, reach me either at, uh, I'm on Facebook at Charlie Solaris. The last name is uh, Solar, S-O-L-A-R, like solar, E-S. Um, I'm also at uh, Beach Volleyball Thailand on Instagram. Beach Volleyball Thailand. I'm also uh, an avid beach volleyball player and coach. Um, and I'm, my email is uh, charlie at sagelandandhouse.com. We also have a property business. So there's a lot of things going on, um, a lot of things that we're involved in. And matter of fact, today here in Kopangan, we're having a food drive which we're really excited about. Uh, a lot of people have donated um, to the food drive cause that we have because now with, uh, with COVID and everything that's happening, uh, the whole island is just kind of going into like a shutdown. It's already low season, but now there hasn't been any big parties. And obviously a lot of you know, full moon and half moon and all these big raves that we have, they really support our local economy. And now, uh, because we haven't been able to have any uh, parties at all, there's a big revenue drop has happened in, uh, on the island. So uh, there's a lot of people, especially Burmese people and Thai people, that are just struggling, struggling really, really bad, even to the point of not having enough food. So we made a video 
and that video um, got passed around and got shared and uh, people sent in quite a bit of money and we were able to buy quite a bit of food and we're having a food drive for the next four weeks. So we're quite excited about that and that's one of the things that we're doing today. Anyhow, again, I just wanna say thank you. Um, I hope everybody has a great day, a blessed day and uh, feel free to contact me on any of these subjects. If you have any interest in them at all, I'm, uh, I'm always willing to share or exchange ideas on these four M's. Okay, guys, have a great day, and uh, I hope we see you soon.